ACT UP AND THE NAMES PROJECT, TWO FUNDAMENTALLY DIFFERENT ORGANIZATIONS, DIVERSE AND INDEPENDENT FROM EACH OTHER, SEPARATE IN THEIR TECHNIQUES AND IN THEIR TACTICS, BOTH BORN FROM ONE TRAGIC DISEASE, AIDS. ACT UP ACTIVISTS ARE UNITED IN ANGER AND COMMITTED TO DIRECT ACTION TO END THE AIDS CRISIS. WE DEMONSTRATE IN THE STREETS PUBLICLY WHEN THE OTHER AVENUES FAIL. THE NAMES PROJECT REACHES OUT TO THE PUBLIC QUIETLY AND TRIES TO WIN SUPPORT AND COMPASSION FOR FAMILIES AND FRIENDS OF PEOPLE WITH AIDS. We are, WE'VE ADOPTED A CERTAIN TONE OF VOICE AND A CERTAIN POSTURE, BUT I THINK YOU'LL FIND THAT uh, MANY OF US ALSO SUPPORT ACT UP AND MANY OF US ARE ALSO INVOLVED IN MORE, in more TRADITIONAL FORMS OF EXPRESSION, LETTER WRITING, LOBBYING, ETC. THERE'S NO SINGLE WAY TO uh, best mobilized people do it all the way. They speak with contrasting voices, but their message is the same. AIDS must be stopped. In October of 1992, both groups brought their AIDS message directly to the nation's capital and to the world. The massive quilt rested silently on the eclipse of the Washington Monument. An estimated 250,000 people gather together to share their pain and their losses. Here we are again. Once again, we gather in the shadows of our nation's monuments. Once again, we raise our candles against a darkening sky. Once again, we bring a quilt. At the other end of the Washington Mall, ACT UP members held a political funeral. What we are doing is showing Everyone who sees us at the White House, who sees any of this in the papers or on TV, who passes it on the street, we're showing them the actual results of what that White House and this administration has done. They have turned people we love into ashes and bone chips and corpses. Thousands of supporters from around the world joined ACT UP members as they walked through the nation's capital with their small containers, each holding the ashes of a loved one, a single individual, whose life was lost to AIDS. The ashes were scattered on the White House lawn. United, both groups joined hands and formed a red ribbon around the White House. The red ribbon is the international symbol for hope and AIDS awareness. Separate symbols, different voices, one message. To defeat AIDS! AIDS was introduced to the American public over a decade ago and was first labeled by the health community as GRID, gay-related immune deficiency. The first AIDS definition was put out in 1981 by the Centers for Disease Control. And what it reflected were the first cases that were diagnosed in San Francisco and in Los Angeles. And these were cases primarily among gay men. There was no knowledge even of what the cause of AIDS was. All the doctors knew were that here were a group of cases that were lumped together with illnesses that people had not been used to seeing in this country. It was reclassified by the Center for Disease Control in 1982 as acquired immune deficiency syndrome. What the CDC would point out is that the definition never was meant to be a clinical diagnosis. So when it came time to expand it, having already developed this long list, what they were looking for was a way of saying, we know there are people out there whose immune <coughs> systems are not working. And that that really is what HIV disease, what AIDS is about. It's an immune deficiency. And now, more than 10 years later, nearly 200,000 people have died from the disease. And the CDC predicts 45,000 more will die this year. The World Health Organization places the number of known cases at a half a million and estimates that 5 to 10 million others may be infected. From 1982 to 1987, AIDS was not only a health crisis, but also a political crisis. Oh, there's no question in my mind that this is, is the great medical 
tragedy of all times and the great government scandal of all times. Under President Ronald Reagan's administration, the White House saw the growing AIDS epidemic as a federal budget threat and moved very slowly to provide funds or other support for AIDS research and prevention. This disease was discovered, named, and grew into a wildfire of an epidemic, all under a president who simply did not care. Reagan didn't address the AIDS issue publicly until November of 1987, five years into the crisis. Given, you know, the level of abuse and neglect, um, you know, murderous neglect over these 12 years now, um, that people have really been so restrained. We die, they do nothing! We die, they do nothing! In the early years of the epidemic, information and publicity about AIDS was laden with prejudice and intolerance. Let me say that if IV drug users and homosexual men would stop their activities today, there would never be another case of AIDS in this country other than the ones already in progress. Billy was a sick boy, his life fading To the American public, AIDS seemed a distant threat, the misfortune of people who fit into high-risk groups. Unfortunately, it hit the gay community the hardest, the fastest, the first. We have had to fight that stereotype automatically. The first question is asked to me, are you, are you a lesbian, an intravenous drug user, or a hooker? I have to be one of those three. No. I am someone's mother. I was somebody's wife. We've had to change that, and that's been hard changing. It's been hard to change the public into knowing full well that it's everybody's disease. The faces of AIDS began to change. There were children with AIDS who wanted to go to school, employees with AIDS who wanted to work, mothers with AIDS who wanted medical benefits, and researchers who wanted funding. If you want to know what someone with HIV infection might look like, look at the what was clear to the leaders of ACT UP and the NAMES Project from the beginning of the epidemic was now coming to light to the nation that AIDS has no boundaries. Everyone, regardless of race, sex, age, or economic status, is at risk. We light a candle against the darkness of bigotry and ignorance that spreads this disease. It was a small group of gay men in New York City who recognized this neglect and prejudice. Well, we always knew that this country wouldn't do anything to stop AIDS if they thought it was just, you know, faggots and um, junkies. The group, led by screenwriter Larry Kramer, mobilized and formed AIDS Coalition to unleash the power. This is genocide, the intentional killing of gays and people of color. We must act up, fight back, fight AIDS. Act Up organizes a response to AIDS by taking symbolic, dramatic actions in demonstrations and through confrontations. Pressure in the streets works, you know. Um, Good cop, bad cop, you know? The people on the inside are able to point to the ones on the outside saying, you know, you better deal with me. Well, I'm nice, I'm rational, I wear a suit, I look like you, you know? Those ones out there, they're crazy. I don't know, I can't control them. I mean, that's, that's part of the function of it. Um, and without those people out there, you lose a lot of power. One of the first and more famous ACT UP events was staged during high mass at St. Patrick's Cathedral. Some 5,000 protesters gathered outside the landmark to scold the Catholic Church for its opposition to safer sex education and for the use of condoms. President George Bush called the demonstration ludicrous and ostracized the group. To go into a Catholic mass in a beautiful cathedral in New York under the cause of helping in AIDS and start throwing condoms around in the mass, I'm sorry, I think it sets back the cause. We cannot move to the extreme. And the other thing is part of 
AIDS, it's one of the few diseases where behavior matters. And I once called on somebody, well, change your behavior. If the behavior you're using uh, prone to cause AIDS, change the behavior. The next thing I know, one of these act up groups is out saying, Bush ought to change his behavior. You can't talk about it rationally. The, the extremes are hurting the AIDS cause. But their voices have been heard. ACT UP has had a loud and unmistakable influence on the public response to this disease. We wanted to change the way AIDS is discussed, you know, to change the whole debate around it from the way it was, you know, pre-1987. Like, we've done that, and we continue to do that. So on that level, we're still effective, and of course, we've gotten certain drugs released and have ended certain discriminatory policies, and we've certainly been a major force behind the, the call for national health care. It was ACT UP's voice that forced the Federal Drug Administration to rewrite the rules for the testing of new anti-AIDS drugs. ACT UP uh, is, was probably the one single entity that made the most difference in terms of the FDA changing its policies. In the past, the FDA has said that a medication needed to be proven. That takes a long time if you're talking about people with HIV. You can imagine HIV is something that plays itself out over like a decade. The biggest change that the FDA made was that they agreed to accept what are called surrogate endpoints, which means instead of black and white, live or die, cure or not cure, things like do T cells get better, do lab tests get, get better, do people feel better. So we end up with uh, drugs being more rapidly available. And that's going to have an effect, by the way, far, far beyond even HIV treatments. It's, it's going to open up treatments in terms of cancers and other kinds of life-threatening illnesses to make things happen faster. It was also ACT UP's voice that pressed the Center for Disease Control to change the very definition of AIDS. In my perspective, ACT UP, for example, has done an incredible amount to bring to focus the need for people to pay attention to the issues surrounding HIV disease with the change that ACT UP has been responsible for in allowing the definition of AIDS to change to incorporate women. It has also brought to mind for women and lesbians in particular that women do get AIDS and that they do need to be concerned about their bodies in connection with this disease and safer sex practices. They've made serious inroads into the health establishment bureaucracy and have become major players at international scientific meetings. Uh, ACTEP and Golden Gate has had many successes. Um, people in our group have been responsible for getting a fund of $50,000 to enable researchers from developing nations who are doing work in AIDS um, to attend international conferences on AIDS that they wouldn't otherwise be able to attend because there was no funding for them. They also fight pharmaceutical companies to lower the cost of medicine, and they work to help people with AIDS receive free drugs. We saw a hole in a program called the AIDS Drug Program, and the AIDS Drug Program is a program that provides drugs to people who can't afford them, who have no other means to pay, who don't qualify for state assistance, um, who don't have private insurance. And when we started looking at this program, it provided two drugs, ACT and aerosolized contaminating. Um, within the course of a year, uh, we got the drug list expanded so that this program now includes over 10 drugs. They advocate the rights of all people with AIDS. Including HIV positive and AIDS prisoners. Die faster! AIDS is a disaster! Prisoners die faster! AIDS is a disaster! Prisoners die faster! AIDS is a disaster! Act Up has to fight for all people affected by AIDS, and that's always a struggle, and always educating people about the diversity of people, you know, affected by AIDS. And Act Up has been fighting. I mean, you know, the different groups have fought on every AIDS issue imaginable. Most of all, members of ACT UP will tell you they are about hope, hope that is fueled by rage. What this movement is about to me is hope. People being hopeful, we know there's a cure out there, and they're not going to find it unless we are involved. It does exist. We just need to find it. And we have hope, and we have anger, and we have rage at how much they've been dragging their feet in this crisis. And we can make a difference. Since its conception, ACT UP has grown to several thousand members, and hundreds of independent branches have sprung up across the United States and the world. You know, we can't bring back any of the people we've lost, but um, 
we can do our damnedest to prevent the loss of more. Thousands of those lives lost to AIDS are remembered through a silent but bold messenger, the Names Project AIDS Memorial Quilt. Stephen Christian, David Lee, Neil Jr., Alan Pinka, Nelson Tetzel. Friends and families and volunteers work side by side in a small San Francisco office and making each panel, each panel the size of a grave, each a personalized reminder of a loved one lost to an incredible disease that until 10 years ago had no name. Our message is peaceful. It's um, non-political. We let the quilt do all the talking. We made no major speeches. And I say we let the quilt do all the talking. The quilt was packed up from its Market Street storefront, box after box, and loaded into eight 48-foot trucks for the long haul to the nation's capital. This would be the last international display, a grim reminder that the AIDS crisis knows no borders. With the help of thousands of volunteers, the panels, 21,000 bound together, were placed for the world to see and understand. From the beginning of this epidemic, it's been something that only happened to other people. It happened only to gay people. It happened only to promiscuous people. It happened only to drug users. Well, it's impossible to, to keep that misinformation in your mind when you're walking through the quilt and seeing the reality of all of these human beings, all of this love. Uh, it brings us together and I think enables people to see it in its true global context as a worldwide tragedy that requires every one of us to stand up and be counted. The silent messenger reminds the nation of the horrifying toll AIDS is taking on all communities. It has been a long three years since last we met. And in those years, our hearts have been broken as surely as the promises made by our president and the leaders of Congress. We have written letters and we have signed petitions. We have lobbied and we have testified. We have cared for the ill and we have buried our dead. We have marched and we have prayed. We have been arrested and beaten by the police. And we have worn red ribbons and sewn our quilts and raised our candles to an ever darker sky. And still, we have failed. When the quilts were first displayed in 1987, they covered less than an acre. Today, it covers more than 15. I began the quilt in my backyard with the name of one man, one man I loved. And now the quilt has grown and become a monstrous thing a terrible, horrible burden of truth and beauty and love. And the vastness of the quilt and the speed with which it grows is the greatest evidence of our failure as a people and our failure as a nation. Since 1987, more than 3 million people have visited the AIDS Memorial Quilt in more than 700 displays worldwide. It includes panels from every state, as well as 29 foreign countries. There are 35 Names Project chapters in the United States, representing thousands of silent voices and reaching out to people beyond the fear and the stigma of AIDS. It's a family of men We've got on this planet There isn't one life We can take for granted Everybody has a mark to leave A difference to make Our backs may be against the wall But our spirit will not break 
So often, the words and images that appear in the media shape the way that people understand and respond to an issue, especially when the subject is as emotional and controversial as AIDS. It's been hard to change the public into knowing full well that it's everybody's disease. Everybody's, not just gay or whatever. It's everybody's. The change has come. I've seen great changes um there's still a lot of work to be done but yeah the changes are there and i'm glad i'm real pleased to see it to still be here to see this happening neither pleas of ignorance nor lack of action will ease the burden of the rising aids death count the terrible fact is aids is more than just a disease a medical condition a health problem it is a threat to social and economic development, to people in their most productive phase of their lives, to family life, to mothers and their children, to entire cultures and populations. AIDS has not gone away for the world, and it certainly has not gone away for the gay and lesbian community in this country. Uh, more women have HIV infection than ever, and services for women and the, pe and the people who are getting new infections are not keeping up. Under the new White House administration, President Bill Clinton promises a new and rapid response to AIDS. We've heard a lot of good things. We are hopeful. We certainly have more access and more reason to hope. But hope doesn't translate into action. And for 12 years, we've been waiting for action from our federal government, and it's past time. Clinton promises to increase funding for research, education, and patient care in the Clinton administration are committed to taking bold action. President Clinton has made a personal commitment to appoint an AIDS policy coordinator, the AIDS czar. The appointee will be named a member of the Domestic Policy Council, and this is our high priority. We're also the first administration that has put dollars behind the rhetoric in the struggle against AIDS. For 1994, we have proposed an 89% increase over the 1993 Wyan-White funding levels. And for AIDS research, after three years of almost zero growth in HHS spending, we have committed to a 17% increase for fiscal year 94, $1.5 billion. We also know that there's an urgent need to educate the American public. Because of that need, in fiscal year 94, we've asked for $49 million above the 1993 level for AIDS prevention. However, these promises are being met with opposition. It has been six months since we elected Bill the Welcher president. What has six months brought us? Bill the Welcher has announced no new AIDS programs, nor put in place anything that would change, end, alter the horrors of the last 12 years. Bill the Welsher has announced no new AIDS are. Far worse, there is no head of AIDS research. Time is being pissed away, just like under Reagan Bush. Nothing is any different. What kind of inhumanity is this? This is yet another president and yet 
another health secretary who do not care about AIDS. He may be saying all the right things, but he isn't doing anything. On what must seem to be an endless road, the work of the Names Project and ACT UP will continue. They remind the public that short of a cure for AIDS, our strongest weapons are education and public policies that seek to preserve the health of all in the community. AIDS can and should be treated like any other disease, and for that matter, the people with HIV AIDS should be able to seek early testing and treatment, should be able to live healthier lives, should be able to monitor the immune system, should be able to eat a nutritionally sound diet, should be able to get plenty of rest and exercise and reduce their stress. Whether one views AIDS as an indictment of a person's lifestyle, the failure of progress of science and medicine, or the inaction by the federal government, the AIDS epidemic is without a doubt one of the most agonizing experiences of our time. It is 12 years. The night is still. We shall not forget. Act Up and the Names Project, two fundamentally different organizations Up and the Names Project, two fundamentally different organizations, diverse and independent from each other, separate in their techniques and in their tactics, both born from one tragic disease, AIDS. ACT UP activists are united in anger and committed to direct action to end the AIDS crisis. We demonstrate in the streets publicly when the other avenues fail. The Names Project reaches out to the public quietly and tries to win support and compassion for families and friends of people with AIDS. We are, we've adopted a certain tone of voice and a certain posture, but I think you'll find that uh, many of us also support ACT UP, and many of us are also involved in more, in more traditional forms of expression, letter writing, lobbying, etc. There's no Up and the Names Project, two fundamentally different organizations, diverse and independent from each other, separate in their techniques and in their tactics, both born from one tragic disease, AIDS. 
ACT UP activists are united in anger and committed to direct action to end the AIDS crisis. We demonstrate in the streets publicly when the other avenues fail. The NAMES project reaches out to the public quietly and tries to win support and compassion for families and friends of people with AIDS. We are, we've adopted a certain tone of voice and a certain posture, but I think you'll find that uh, many of us also support ACT UP, and many of us are also involved in more, in more traditional forms of expression, letter writing, lobbying, etc. There's no 